Did you know that Discord can be now used for more than just chatting with your friends? Yes, I have a video before when I explained how it can be used as a potential C2, but this guy took it seriously. Now Discord is fully integrated inside the Mythic C2 framework and the Athena agent is now using it. So you can effectively use Discord, this application, into issue callbacks and pwn your environment. Now Athena is as I mentioned one of the Mythic agents. This agent is solely based on .NET Core, which makes the whole payload big, which makes the whole payload evasive, because that's when AVs tend to avoid scanning that huge chunk of, chunks of file. But what's interesting is what Athena actually supports. Athena supports not only HTTP communication, but various kinds of communication, including SMB, as shown in my previous Athena video, and now we have Discord. So if you type Discord, mythic c2 like that open that url right here you can then see that there is a c2 channel built inside mythic that supports discord communication in order to get started we need to first follow these steps which means that we need to navigate to the developers type of discord we need to generate new application there pretty much generate a new bot with this bot we can then assign the appropriate privileges add them to your channel and then make the things in the config file of mythic so let's get everything to set up as you as you already see i am inside the developers type into the discord slash applications the link of that will be dropped into the link of this video but make sure to also check these two repositories athena and discord now i've already showcased how to install mythic c2 if you need any more more guidance just make sure to click the link into the video description if you need anything else hit me up in discord make sure to join there are no boss in there at least not a malicious one. Now, when I go back to the developer portal, I can go into new application right there and type my name. Let's, let's just type something like a uh, test bot, just like that. All right, I can do create. And then over this test bot, we need to do something super important. First, we need to get its ID. Then we need to assign the bot's privileges. So if I go to bot, I get to reset token. Yes, do it. And this is pretty much require me to open my MFA. So let me just do that real quick. All right. And after that, we can see the token of the bot. So I'm going to know that token right there. I'm just going to save it into my Kylie's folder. So I can do Vim, bot that token and just paste it just to have it for later. Now, after we have the token, we're going to need two more things. But before that, as mentioned, we need to assign the bot privileges. This being done, I usually, when I do such kind of bots, I usually spam all the intents because why not but here we need especially the message content intent so i'm just gonna click that then i'm gonna go to save settings and then after that we need to do send message right there and then manage messages which is somewhere um, there yeah just just before my eyes <laughs> if you have Let's say further needs, you can directly spam administrator that's going to have all the privileges you're going to need. And the administrator privileges is having ID of eight. And that's important because we need to invite the bot to our server. Now, I usually like to put this one out as well. So the bot has more permission over the test server we're going to need for the C2 framework. And when I go to all two, that's how you can generate a bot with appropriate permissions. Now here, I want to click the bot option right there. And with the bot option, I'm going to type administrator like that. And then I'm going to copy the link. So after I paste that link here, I'm going to get asked on which server I want the bot to come. The test server, which is my server here, which I already have one mythic bot, which I was used to testing before the video shoot. But now let me add the new one. So as shown, we're going to add this bot as administrator. So I'm going to authorize and then this bot is going to get spawned into my server. And as you can see, now we have two bots first test bot and second mythic bot now after the bot is there we have the token we need several more things to do the first thing we need to do is to get the channel id and the server id so in that case the server id is right right click actually not on my server but on this one right there and then we can copy the server id which in that case is this one there then the channel id the process is exactly the same i can just copy the channel id paste it there and we are now good to go we have the both of the ids all right but now let's hop back into the mythic and let's do setup a little bit there now i'm on the mythic c2 framework here 
And if I go to my C2 profiles, I've already installed Discord and I've already installed Athena. Now, the installation of these two things is extremely simple. All you have to do is run this command right there as root from your mythic repository. I'm not gonna do that now because it's gonna take a while, but if you run this specific command, again, from root, you're gonna have a thin agent up and ready. The process with Discord is exactly the same. You can do sudo mythic CLI, install GitHub, and specify the link to the Discord C2 profile. When that thing is ready, and when both of the installations are finished, you're gonna see this screen right here, Athena, agent online, and then Discord agent online. What I enjoy doing is manage my saved instances. What this allows me to do is to in ensure that I have an instance for specific cases and I can easily navigate when I'm building a payload afterwards. So I can click this beacon right there, I can do new instance and then the instance name would be let's say you know, video shoot or let's do it like please subscribe. Alright, then here we're gonna need the bot token and in that case the bot token is the one we just saved like that. So let me just copy it real quick, paste it there. Now the callback interval, I'm gonna leave it as default. The jitter again will be default. And we're gonna need one more piece of thing here and that is the channel ID. So my bad, we don't really need the server ID but rather only the channel ID, which in that case is the second parameter. But for just for any cases, I'm gonna copy it directly from here. I'm gonna paste it right away. And after that, I need to create this safety instance. And then all I need to do is to generate the payload from Athena. So I can go to payloads there. I can go to actions. I can generate a new payload. I can specify windows and see how responsive the mythic UI is. And by the way, did you pay attention to the dashboard? How much these guys are putting work into this C2? That's why I love it so much. Then on the Apple tab, click Athena, choose the binary. I'm gonna stick with the defaults. Feel free to customize it as you wish, but defaults are fine for this demo. I'm gonna add all the commands. And now here we can choose between communicating over HTTP, communicating over Discord. Choose Discord, my save distance, please subscribe. And this is all we're gonna need. After I do next, I can do a Tina, let's say video.zip. And inside that zip file is going to be the payload itself. So I'm gonna just create a payload like that. And keep in mind that it usually takes a while. And also one huge note is that Sometimes if your machine is lacking resources, this might not compile. So make sure to have at least eight gigs of RAM because this is, trust me, huge compilation. And the creator of the, of the, of the agent told me that I need more space and more, not more space, more RAM. After I boost up my VM settings, I was able to compile without an error. So thank, thanks once again, and make sure to have at least eight gigs of RAM on your Kali machine where the mythic is hosted. Now, when, while that is running, I'm going to connect to my other machine, so I can do PC local right there. I can connect to my server. And from there, I can open my command VM because that's where I want my test to be done. That's just way too easy for me. So command VM, open it as a VM while the, that thing compiles, power on, and that's about it. And by the way, I found a super cool mythic feature and that is if you copy the link right there, you can download the file directly from the Mythic server without having any need of authentication or authorization. So Mythic effectively hosts all the payload files by itself. You just have to copy and download the link. Now, don't get me wrong. This link can be strange and not OPSEC safe if you do it in real engagement, but I know for testing is just perfect. Now, the payload, as you can see, is already building. I mentioned that it's so slow because the payload size is huge and the final binary is like 40 plus megabytes, which is, is a lot. This by itself has a con, and that's because the transfer is kind of harder, but it has a pro, and that is it's much more evasive because AVs tend to just skip huge files, thinking that they are not malicious by definition, but that thing is not the case now. So while that is running, I'm gonna set up my command VM real quick right there. I'm just gonna log in. All right, and we're here, I am ready to just download the payload and operate with it. Now, the cool thing about Discord is that first, you do not need Discord installation on the server side or on the client side, which is nice because Discord on, under the hood is using HTTPS, but since it's using, let's say, a secure channel or a channel that is trusted, it's not considered malicious, so this traffic can blend in into the normal one. And 
one of the coolest things, as I said, you don't need to have Discord instance running. link. The only reason why I have Discord is just to monitor what's going on, even though the messages are automatically deleted. I ask the creator to, in future, add flags, which can allow me to actually save the messages into Discord, so that's yet to be built, and we have to appreciate the work once again. Now, the payroll should be done now. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna cut the video so we don't have to wait that much, and after that's been done, I'll be back. I'm pausing the video just to say thank you to my Patreon sponsors. You have no idea how much I appreciate your support and how much motivated you feel me to continue doing my work. If you have further appreciation for my channel as well, make sure to become my Patreon and then you can access Shadowburn, my private packer, alongside with other hidden GitHub repositories. Thank you so much, see you there and moving on. Alright, now the payload is finished, so all I can do is just right click on the download icon right there and just copy clean link after that i can go to my command vm open up a simple firefox because i think that's gonna be easier and just paste the link now i can just click advanced and accept the risk and right off the bat we can see the payload is downloaded without me even logging in so that's a huge one and i was today years old when i discovered it so don't blame me on that i can just unzip the files like here right here and then all I need to do is open it with, let's say, CMDR, CMD, or anything else. But I'm not sure what happened here. Maybe, oh yeah, maybe my explorer was way too slow. Never mind. So we have the Athena EXE right there. I'm going to open CMDR and then just navigate to the CD downloads and open Athena.exe. Now, by default, we're not going to see any kind of output by executing Athena. So on the Discord, we can observe that the test bot is now online, even though it was not before. And when I open my Mythic tab, go to callbacks, we can now see our commando beacon open up. It's streaming right now. We have the PID, we have the timestamp, and now we can start to issue some commands. Now, if I do who am I, we can see that the commands come rise of, right off the bat because I believe, I'm not sure if it's using WebSocket, I'm going to ask the developer about it, but it's super fast. So about that, if I go to my Discord page, you won't see anything, pretty much anything. And now since I'm recording and my streamer mode is enabled, it's even more stealthier because usually when I'm online, you can see the messages pumping up and you can see something's going on. But now the bot works like that. As soon as some command is executed, the bot is going to automatically delete it, so there are no traces in the Discord server. I can try running the whole command again. You can see the, you can see the payload, but as soon as it's, it's been there, it's all done. Now, as I mentioned, one of the coolest thing about that is this mythic instance is on my Kali VM, which is running right there without a desktop manager, but it has no Discord. The command VM has no Discord. I have in this code just to monitor what's going on and if the bot is online or not and that thing just works now that's amazing because first the discord traffic is trusted by default the discord traffic is well known and then is is, is considered legit now the discord operates under https which is extremely nice because both entities can interact with https just as any other service like google or facebook and i believe this is one very very nice tool to have so when you need more opsec when your beacon operates the discord option is i believe a great one and don't get me wrong even though the beacon is operating from discord you can still work with all the commands you can still work with all the things that athena has to offer and enjoy your red team in operation so that was from my side i really hope you enjoyed the video try that one of, of yourself and join my discord i'm waiting for your feedback no boss there don't worry